Welcome to Ottawa Citadel Online. Thank you for joining us for worship today on this very first Sunday of 2021. We joyfully look forward to what God has in store for us this year. And so our call to worship has been selected from Psalm 100. And it says, Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's continue to worship together.
Well, good morning. And let me take this opportunity on behalf of Captain Graciela, myself, and her whole family to wish each one of you a very, very happy and blessed new year. It is our prayer that this year that each one of us would become more and more aware of the blessings that God continually pours out upon us. Even in the midst of trouble, even in the midst of pandemic, God continues to bless us, his people. We pray that as we begin this new year, that this would also be an opportunity for each one of us to reconsider, uh, to rededicate ourselves to him and to his service. Well, Friday night as a family, we all gathered together on New Year's Eve to watch the ball drop in New York City. We gathered in front of the TV and we watched as that ball dropped. And as it did, we toasted each other with some sparkling apple juice. Uh, we laughed, we hugged, we sang, we cried as we've said goodbye to 2020. And we offer a very, very warm welcome to our friend 2021. As I was scrolling through people's social media posts over the past few days, it's been quite evident that Many, many people are so, so, so looking forward to positive change in our world for this coming year. People are definitely not sad to say goodbye to 2020. I can't blame them. We would all acknowledge this today that it's been a challenging year. And I sense that people just want to speed into 2021 without looking back into that dust cloud that we call 2020. Well, I think as a world, as a community of faith, as a church, we are anticipating, we are counting on, and we are calling on God for even greater things. Yes, people are anticipating 2021 that there would be greater things in many different ways. Personally, I don't think 2020 was all bad. It wasn't full of everything bad. And as I mentioned, there were so many blessings as we look back on the past year. There is so much that we have learned. There are so many blessings. And there have been so many new opportunities for us, even as a core, to proclaim and to share the word of God. And so as we look back, as we have looked back, I want to challenge you to, even in the midst of trials, that you would take time to thank God for the blessings that he has given to you. To be quite honest, these past couple days, I've often wondered to myself, you know, what has really changed? What has really changed? Yes, on our wall, you know, we hang up that new calendar or we turn the page and it says January 2021, but has anything really changed in your life? With the turning of the calendar, has anything really changed? I look around us. I'm still standing here by myself in the sanctuary speaking to a camera. Our world is still in the midst of a global pandemic. And in our province and right across the country, we are still in lockdowns. COVID cases don't seem to be going away anytime soon. Many of us still have our own personal problems, our issues, and our shortcomings that were only with us a few days ago. And so I ask myself and I ask you, what has really changed in these past couple days? Between December 31st and January 1st, what has really changed in your life? Is there something magical that happens at the stroke of midnight, like some type of Disney fairy tale? Sometimes for me, I think, you know, as we go from New Year's Eve to New Year's Day, it's one of the most anticlimactic days of the year because when I wake up in the morning, nothing has really changed. So I think today, rather than ask ourselves what has changed by the flipping of a page on a calendar, I think we need to ask ourselves what will change. What are we committed to as followers of Christ? What are we committed to? to changing in our lives so that we can experience even greater things in 2021 with our Lord and Savior. You know, you might have a list of personal goals or resolutions, whatever you want to call them, but what needs to change in your walk and journey with Jesus? I think if we want and if we expect God to do greater things, 
we really need to look at our, take a look in and see what needs to change in our lives so that we can draw closer and closer to him. Well, you might be inclined to say, well, Captain, I'm doing just fine. I don't need to change anything. Okay, fair enough. But let me caution you this morning against complacency and against stagnation because as Christians, we need to be always moving closer and closer to Jesus and being conformed more and more to his image through and by the power of his Holy Spirit in our lives. With this new year, I really sense that there is this renewed sense of hope that there are 365, well, maybe it's 363 now, days of uh, unknown adventure that lie ahead of us. These are days that are filled. They are days that are full of amazing potential and promise. In the news, we hear about vaccines being approved and slowly distributing distributed we expect greater things for 2021 don't we so the question i have this morning is what are we going to do with these 363 days that are left in this year what are we going to do to allow god to do something great in your and my life there's been a couple of words that have bounced over my, in my mind these past few days, and I've already said them a few times. And perhaps this is, personally, it's my watchword and challenge for 2021, and that is greater things. Greater things. I can't help but think that the Lord has greater things in store for our world, for our church, and for us personally as individual. Greater things. And as I thought about what greater things might mean, there were three things that came to mind. And let me share them with you right from the beginning. Number one, that we would have a greater walk, that we would have a greater voice, and that we would have a greater serve. Very quickly, let me just look at each one of these. The first thing is that we, in 2021, would have a greater walk. One of the greatest challenges for Christians at any point of the year, whether it's the first day or last year or, or day, day or somewhere in between, one of the greatest challenges is that our journey is growing closer and closer, that we are having a closer walk with Jesus. I'm reminded of these words from this old, old song, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Let me read them for you. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long. As I walk, as I walk, let me walk close to thee. And the chorus says, just a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Dear, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Wasn't that a wonderful prayer for us as we start the year? That we would desire to walk closer and closer to Jesus and to be more and more like him. Um, Closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus, this is my plea. Is that your plea? Is that your prayer this morning? That as we go throughout these days, that you would be drawn closer and closer to him. I share with you these words from uh, the pastor of Grace Fellowship Church in Toronto, Tim Challies. And he writes this, Obviously, our Christian growth can move at various speeds. And we tend to have a kind of ebb and flow Sometimes we're moving ahead in leaps and bounds. At other times, it's at a snail's pace. When it's moving in such laboriously slow fashion, we may think that, is that it has become utterly stagnant. Again, if there is no evidence of growth whatsoever, then I would say it's time to examine our souls and our hearts to see if we're in Christ at all because that's where the spirit of Christ indwells a person. He will not permit total stagnation. In other words, we need to be always moving forward. There's no such thing as a Christian remaining stagnant in the relationship with God, always moving forward, always pressing on towards that goal of being more and more like him. John chapter 15 verse 4 says this, Live in me. Make my home in me just as I do in you, in the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine. You can't bear fruit unless 
you're joined with me. If we want to see that spiritual fruit, if we want to see the fruit of the Spirit evident and abounding in our lives, then we need to make sure that we are attached to Jesus at all times. And finally, let me share with you verses from James chapter 4, verses 7 to 10. Another wonderful reminder for us. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. The key verse I want to point out here is James chapter 4, verse 8. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. So I pray, 2021, that we would have a greater walk, that our journey with him would be even closer and closer. Second, when we think about greater things, uh, I think that we can have in our world a greater voice. Uh, there's two things that I would, would say here. And that number one is that we would have a greater voice that cries out for justice. You know, we look all around in our world. There's injustices of all different kinds. And so the question I ask myself and the question that I ask you is, what are we doing to speak up against the injustices in our world? This well-known verse from Micah chapter 6 verse 8 says, He has shown you what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? Well, here's the answer that's provided. To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Greater things. He's calling us to have a greater voice. I'm not talking about my singing voice here, although my kids and Graciela, maybe that's their prayer for 21, that God would improve my voice that way. But no, I'm talking about a voice that cries out, a voice that speaks up, and we are a people that stands up against the injustices in our world and fight to right the wrongs of our world. Second, thinking about a greater voice. I believe that if we want greater things and if we expect God to do greater things in our lives and in our church, we need a voice that unashamedly proclaims salvation to the whole wide world, and get this, for the whosoever, for the whosoever, and I challenge you to think of who the whosoever really, really is. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, Be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you are living the way you are, and always with the utmost courtesy. Always be ready to talk about why we live the way we do, which means we need to be careful how we live, going back to point number one. And then the second point of that is always with the utmost courtesy. We are the Salvation Army. We are the Salvation Army. All we do should proclaim the saving power of Jesus Christ. And so the question I have for you today as we think about having a greater voice, what can you do? What can we do to make him better known? What can we do with our voice to proclaim the good news and indeed make it good news that Jesus Christ has come to offer us hope in this world? So greater things, we're looking at a greater walk, a greater voice, and a greater serve. How is your serve? I'm not talking about your tennis or badminton serve. I'm talking about how is your serve to others? How is your service to others and how is your service to God? Maybe through your church or your core. If anything that this time of isolation and shutdown has brought about it's the time that we've had to engage in worship. I don't know about you, but on any day of the week, I can go on to any social media or YouTube and watch just about any service I want from any denomination, from anywhere in the country or even anywhere right across the globe. I think that as Christians and as a church, we've, got, we've become very good at worshiping, even if that is online during these past months. 
But when we think about it, worship is really one aspect of what the church is called to do and called to be. And it causes me, causes me to think a little bit more about what are we doing to serve others? What are we doing to serve others? Certainly we must acknowledge that it's been a, a little bit, if not a lot, harder to engage in service in a COVID and pandemic world. But there is no such thing as a Christian who does not serve. And when we think about Jesus, he came as a servant leader. He came as a servant king. And that is our calling, to serve in the name of Jesus, to bring glory to his name, and to share the good news with others. There's no such thing as a Christian that does not serve. And even in our world, there are still ways that we can engage in serving others. This morning, I could rhyme off a list of things to you, but I don't think I have to do so. Uh, God's given you a brain, and you can think of ways that you can serve others. And if you have creative ways that maybe you or we as a church can serve, I would love for you to text me or email me and let me know the creative ways, um, the new ways maybe, that God is allowing you to serve in his name. In some ways, I think that the pandemic has stifled the way that we serve as a church, uh, the way that we would normally serve each other here in our congregation, and ways that we might normally reach out and serve our community. The nature of this beast has been to, you know, sometimes focus on ourself and self-preservation it's not to say that we haven't been concerned about others, but, you know, some of the traditional ways that we as a Salvation Army would serve, yes, some of them continue, but some of them have been hampered by this virus. Some of them have been put on the back burner. As we move forward into this new year, as we look forward to 2021, I think it's important that we, and I think it's important that we begin to reimagine what our serve is going to look like in this year. How can we do the most and how can we do the best with the resources that we have and the resources that God has given us? As we look at our own family services department, maybe that means a shakeup and a change of how we serve our clients in order to give them the best hand up that we can. I'm reminded of these words from the song, how can I better serve thee, Lord? There are still things at the church that need to be done. There are still friends and neighbors that need to experience a touch of Christ in their lives. And the Lord is calling us to do that, to serve in his name. Greater things. Do you believe that God wants even greater things for you? I'm sure he does. I know he wants greater things for you. And today, I would invite you in these moments to take the time to rededicate yourself to him. Rededicate yourself to him today and allow him to use you for his purposes. This year in 2021, let's strive for even greater things. And if we can focus on these things as a group, that we would focus on a greater walk, that is, a great, greater commitment to growing as a disciple of Christ, seeking him to become more like him. A greater walk. Second, a greater voice. Let's have a greater voice in our world. Let's season our words and our actions so that people will listen and will be receptive to the Holy Spirit's leading. Let's use our voice to proclaim words of love and hope to our world. And finally, let's look for a greater serve. And our prayer is, Lord, that would you please use us? As imperfect as we may be, would you please use us to make a difference in our community? Lord, would you help us to serve with a purpose and a passion to bring glory to you and to bring souls into your kingdom. Greater things. That's my personal challenge for 21, that I would strive in all I do for greater things. And it's my challenge to you. It's our challenge to the church today, to our core, that we would indeed strive for greater things, that we would not become complacent, that we would not um, 
be satisfied with the status quo, but that we would have a burning desire deep within our hearts to strive for and expect greater things from and with God. Well, the truth is, I don't know, and we don't know what the new year will bring. I know God does, but we really don't know what it will bring. I don't place my hope in the turning of a page on a calendar that hangs on my wall. My hope, along with the hope of all Christians, is found in Christ and Christ alone. I place my hope this year knowing that no matter what happens, that God is ultimately in control. I know that because my experience of the past tells me that God is in control and that God is faithful. I can have hope in him. I have hope because of Jesus' death and resurrection. And there's nothing in this world that can change that. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And as I leave you today, and as we spend moments of reflection, I just want to leave you with this quote that I saw online on New Year's Eve from someone unknown. Our hope is not in the new year, but in the one who makes all things new. Our hope is not in the new year, but in the one who makes all things new. And today, I pray that you would put your hope and trust in him because he wants greater things for each one of us. May God bless you and Happy New Year. As we end our time of worship together, and as we look forward to the greater things that God has in store for us in 2021, as we submit to God's will and speak truth to others, and as we serve in his name, we leave with the words found in James chapter 4, verses 7 to 10, and John 15, verse 4. And it says, submit yourselves to God. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Purify your hearts. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Remain in him, and he will remain in you. May God bless you.